Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. So in today's video, we're really going to have a pretty simple video today. I wanted to talk to you guys about unit selection. Uh, VRVS has a lot of vendor units to choose from and there's a lot of vendor units that folks didn't even know existed because they're coming from the mini split world over to the VRF world. And on the mini split systems, there just are not very many Ender unit styles to choose from. So in today's video, it's going to be a very simple video. We're really just going to focus on what indoor units are available for you to select in the design process before you get out to the job site to install your VRVS system. So this will conclude uh, the first session of videos for the install series. In next week's video, we're gonna be focused on piping and actual install related rules. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please click that like button below. It really helps out my channel. We are still trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you guys have any questions along the way, make sure to put them in the comments below. All right, you guys, let's jump right in. Now you guys, before we get started today, I just wanted to reiterate in case you didn't hear me before or in case I haven't already mentioned this, this is not a factory authorized training. This is not a training in any way, shape or form. This is just a discussion. I wanted to get you guys the important bullet points, the important information pulled from my experience and discussions and past trainings, the installation and operation manuals, things from the engineering and service manuals, really just give you guys the bullet points give you guys the breakdown the things you need to know the things you need to look out for this is not a training and i just want to make sure that i make that clear all right you guys so we're going to go through all of the indoor units that daikin offers for vrv products and as we go through these indoor units uh, we're going to be going through them in order of popularity we're going to talk about the size available for each of these styles. Really, the goal here is just show you guys the vast number of styles that are available for VRV products compared to, say, your mini split systems, which only have a few indoor styles to choose from. Something else to consider is everything we talk about in today's video is going to really be focused on VRVS as it pertains to the residential application. The order of popularity is going to be totally different when it comes to commercial applications. So I just wanted to make sure to let you guys know that we are kind of focused on the residential application in this video. The most popular is the wall mount by far, which you also have available on mini splits, both single zone and multi zone uh, systems. Wall mount is pretty generic. It's beige, nothing super fancy about it. It's a wall mount, it does not come with a condensate pump built into it. So you do need to either add one or you're going to need to gravity drain the condensate. The next most popular, oh, uh, before I forget, the wall mount is available from 7,000 BTUs all the way up to 2 tons, 24,000 BTUs. All right, the next most popular indoor unit is the air handler, the FXTQ. It is a multi-position air handler, which is awesome because that means you can buy one SKU, one model, and you can go up flow, down flow, or in a horizontal left or horizontal right direction fabulous because some of the other brands I work with, you have to buy a particular model. And then if you get out to the job site and you have the wrong one, now you could run into some lead time issues. You have an upset homeowner or end user and it just, it just causes headaches. So having one SKU, it's a fully multi-position air handler. Awesome. It's available from 9,000 BTUs and that is a B cabinet all the way up to 60,000 BTUs in a D cabinet. You have up to 36,000 BTUs in a B cabinet, and then it goes to a C cabinet for the three and a half and the four ton, and then a D cabinet for the four and a half and the five ton. It also does not come with a built-in condensate pump. It looks kind of like a traditional air handler. It's a gravity drain. Um, depending on where you're located, you may need a secondary drain pan. It does have on the board a set of contacts for a drain pump or for a hockey puck wet switch. Uh, so you can directly integrate the alarm fairly easily. So it does have everything built in uh, as far as that goes. 
your next most popular unit is actually one of my favorites. It's the FX EQ one-way cassette. I really like this unit because it's a great complement or alternative to the wall mount. The wall mount sits on your wall. And if you guys have seen the one in my garage, I mean, it looks fine, but I don't know if I personally want one in every room of my house. Commercially speaking, I think it's no problem. Residentially, I'm on the fence. It's like the homes that I see that have them look fine. I just don't know if I'd go through the process of putting them in my house. I also already have ductwork, so going with a ducted solution made more sense in my particular house. But in homes where you're doing a remodel and you have the joists, your ceiling joists exposed, sheetrocks pulled down, the one-way cassette is really slick because it slides up in between two of your joists on one of the perimeter walls up in the ceiling. And then it has this nice, pretty decoration, uh, decoration panel, kind of looks like a louver that blows air across the room. So now you can kind of go from that, it's on my wall perspective to now it's up in my ceiling and I don't have to worry about it. That is available in 7.5 thousand BTU, so the 7K model, all the way up to two tons. The thing that is going to possibly hinder us here is it's 18 and a half inches deep. So if your joists aren't wider than that, you're either gonna have to cut and frame it in or you're not gonna be able to use it because if your joists are 16 inch on center, there's not enough room for an 18 and a half inch deep cassette. Uh, it would be great if we had skinnier cassettes like the Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi has skinnier cassettes, but uh, we don't have that yet for Daikin. So it is what it is. Moving on to the next unit is the FXSQ. So the FXSQ came out a couple years ago to eventually replace the FX. MQ. They are what we call the flat ducted units or horizontal ducted units that you might see. The mini splits have a slim duct available. Uh, the VRV systems also have the FX DQ. Basically, the difference between the DQ, the SQ, and the MQ is the static pressure capabilities. The SQ has what we call auto static adjustment, which is nice. It's a feature you can set so that you don't have to manually set the static pressure if you don't already know what the ductwork design static is is um, it also has auto fan speed just like the fx tq and the nice thing about this is you can put the fan on auto and it will ramp up and ramp down the fan speed based on the difference between set point and room temp so at my house i pretty much just have the fans on auto all the time now auto in the sense of vrf means the speed changes automatically but the fans stay on all the time. So when your unit satisfies the heat demand or the cool demand and goes thermal off, the fan goes down to a low, low speed. It doesn't shut off. You have the ability to change that setting if you want, which is one of the nice features about VRV, but out of the box, it's not set up for that. But it has the auto fan speed where the FXMQ and the FXDQ do not have the auto fan speed available. The FXMQ can go up to a higher overall static pressure. So usually we're using those in commercial applications. They can go up to 0.8 inches, but they only have the low, medium, high fan speeds available, no auto fan speed available. The FXSQ goes from 5,000 BTUs all the way up to 54,000 BTUs, while the MQ, FXMQ version of that unit only goes down to 7,000 BTUs. It still goes up to 54,000 BTUs. The DQ is definitely an older model. Let's be as politically correct as we can here. It is a slim duct, a low static, or I should say a no static ducted unit. So Dana, what is a no static ducted unit? What does that even mean? Well, basically it means it's a concealed ductless unit. It doesn't have static capabilities. It has basically point one, two inches of static pressure capability, which is just a tiny, tiny little branch of duct. The idea here is you're gonna put it in a soffit of a family room with a supply grill on the front and a return register on the bottom, and you're gonna call it a day. We rarely use them. They are available on the VRV and the mini splits, but they are rarely used because the SQs are so small and versatile. The SQs are only nine inches tall, so we can put them in some really tight spaces above closets, above the laundry room, uh, obviously in the attic and in the crawl space as well. So now we have two cassettes. We have the FX ZQ and the FX FQ. They're both ceiling cassettes that go in the middle of the room. 
So here is where the FX ZQ would come into play if I have like a living room, I don't have a ceiling fixture. So at my house, I have a ceiling light and a little fan fixture I don't wanna remove. It's aesthetically pleasing, so I wouldn't use this model myself. I'd go with the one-way cassette if I was gonna do a cassette. But the FX ZQ is a four-way throw. It's a two by two. So on commercial applications, it fits great right into a T-bar ceiling. In a house, as long as you have 24 inch on center joists or larger, I don't think they get much larger than that, but 24 inch on center joists, this guy will slide right up in between. It's nice and snug. It's a 22 inch by 22 inch wide cassette. And it does have a uh, auto fan speed. So it's one of the newer FX ZQ T series indoor units. It has sizes available from 5,000 BTUs up to one and a half tons. So if you need something larger than one and a half tons, this unit will not work. You'd have to go to the FX FQ. The FX FQ is a three by three. It's a 33 by 33 inch wide unit, not often used in residential applications. So it's kind of towards the more bottom end of our popularity list but it is available in 7,000 BTUs all the way up to 48,000 BTUs. And it has a really cool self-cleaning decoration panel, which means every single night, usually at midnight, this is the default setting, you can change it, but it will basically clean the filter on its own. It has a little scrub brush, a little motor, spins the filter around over the scrub brush, uses the return air through a little hose uh, that's up in the decoration panel to push the debris into a collection bin. And then when the collection bin is full, there's an LED on the corner of the panel that goes from green to red, indicating that the next time you're vacuuming, you need to take your little vacuum nozzle and go and pull out all that dust and debris. And then you're onto the races, so you don't have to pull the filter out, clean it, you don't have to replace it. It's just reusable forever and ever. Very, very neat, ends up paying for itself in less than a year. Usually we'll use that by default on commercial jobs, but again, this unit isn't used in residential that often, so it may not be the best solution for you. The next two indoor units on our list are actually twins. We call them the floor mount brothers. One's an exposed floor mount. One is a concealed floor mount. They are the exact same unit, but one has a shell and one does not have a shell. So depending on your application, if you need to put a floor mount unit in place of a radiator, it's a really good application for these floor mounts. They are not aesthetically pleasing. They are some of the oldest units that we have in the R410A series of products, but they do their job and they do what they're designed to do. The concealed version is just like the FXDQ. It's not designed for ductwork, so it's designed to be put into a little cabinet, if you will, with a supply grill over the top to pull the return air in from the bottom. If you're ever in Seattle, go to the wings over Washington. There's a huge commercial VRV system with these concealed floor mounts in it. And it's just like when you go to a, a like, a, uh, what am I thinking here? Uh, the virtual rides. So that'd be like uh, Universal Studios and you're in line and you're in those rooms before you get to the ride and they always play like the shows and the whatever to try to scare you or excite you before you get to the ride. Well, this is kind of what it is on Wings Over Washington. It's a virtual ride. And when you're in the room in line, it's cooled and heated by these floor mounts that are all hidden. And when you get onto the ride, turn around and look to the back wall because there's a bunch of wall mounts that are all painted camouflage to blend in with the forest. It's pretty cool uh, if you are a tourist. If you ever go to Seattle, just make sure you check it out. It's right by the big great wheel on Alaskan Way. You can't miss it. So cool application for those units, just to give you guys an example. The last two on our list are going to be ceiling suspended units, which are almost exclusively used in commercial. So we have the four-way throw. It's the FX UQ. So the FX UQ is available one and a half, two, two and a half, and three ton sizes. It is just like the FX FQ with the exception, the entire cabinet is actually exposed in a shell and mounted up against a ceiling. So the idea here is that I don't have any room above my ceiling, but I really want a cassette or I really need a cassette. So I'm just gonna mount the whole unit. It's an eight inch tall unit and I'm just gonna screw it to my ceiling. And then your line set can either go exposed out the corner of it, or you can pop up above the ceiling. Let's say you have a little bit of room, enough room for a line set, but maybe not enough room for the unit itself. So you can pop up the top of it and then run your line set hidden above the ceiling. It's a unique unit. We don't sell 
uh, a ton of them in my market, but they do have their purpose. Uh, the last unit is the FXHQ. It's another very old unit. It's available in one, two, and three ton sizes. It's basically a one-way throw ceiling suspended unit. So great for corridors where I have to throw that air really, really far. Uh, good for server rooms because the wall mounts just don't move a ton of air. These FXHQ units move a lot more air compared to the wall mount. So I like to go with those as an option. So lots of entry units to choose from here. And there's also an ERV, although uh, the ERV, the smallest size you can get is 300 CFM. So it's not always ideal for a home, typically for for an ERV or for an HRV, you know, the Fantech Hero is a really good solution. It's typically one that I like to go with personally um, for home, for residential applications. But for commercial, 300, 450, 600, and 1200 CFM uh, indoor mounted ERVs. They're flat horizontal ERVs. Uh, they work great. They're pretty simple. We use them all over the place for commercial applications in my market. Hey guys, I'm going to jump in here real quick. This is Future Dana. There are two indoor units I forgot to talk to you guys about, and I apologize. The first one we don't really use in the residential world, so you're not missing out on much. It's just an EXV kit. We call it the AHU integration kit. It allows us to integrate VRV systems on commercial jobs to existing air handlers, package units with DX coils, you name it. So that way we can do uh, retrofit applications and have a little bit more flexibility on the commercial side, not typically used in residential applications though. So I didn't really think about talking to you guys about this, but it is technically an option and it is technically compatible with VRVS outdoor units, just not commonly used in residential applications. The other indoor unit, which I didn't even think to talk about because it replicates the FX TQ air handler so closely is the A-coil and Daikin's uh, CX TQ A-coil, which pairs with their communicating gas furnaces is totally designed for residential applications. I just, for some reason, totally forgot to talk about it. So it is available in two tons, three tons, four tons, and five ton sizes. Again, it has to be paired with, at least today, it has to be paired with Daikin's communicating gas furnaces. I know Daikin is trying to work on a kit that allows you to put it with uh, basically any gas furnace out there. Uh, we've talked a little bit about VRV Life versus VRV S on this channel before, and we've also talked about the differences in manufacturers, so I won't go into too much detail, but that is also one of the indoor units that you can select when selecting indoor units, but it is only available with VRV Life outdoor units. If you have a VRV S, an RXTQ outdoor unit, you cannot put the A coil, the CXTQ, on that outdoor unit. It has to specifically be the VRV Life outdoor unit RXSQ. All right, you guys, that's going to conclude today's video. I hope you enjoyed these last three videos going over product and technology, going through sizing and combination ratios, getting that conversation out really about making sure that the system you're going to be installing and starting in next week's video is sized properly and the equipment that you've selected is best for the homeowner that you're installing it for. Sometimes I'll take the list of all the indoor units that we talked about and I will show them all to the homeowner and recommend this one or that one or a combination of these two or three and then let them pick because you never know. Sometimes you think that they're going to really like this cassette, but they look at the wall mount and they're a very simple homeowner and they're like, you know what, let's just do the wall mount. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. If I haven't already, when you guys watch this video, please consider subscribing to help my channel grow. It means a lot to me. And of course, if you guys have any questions, comments, ideas for future videos, we do have a whole slated project ahead of us here for more episodes in this series. So any other ideas that you guys might come up with, put them in the comments below because I read all of your comments and I always do my best to respond. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys, and watching Inverter always. I hope you have an awesome day.